Hello, welcome back to Rational Numbers. We're just going to wrap up this concept by um, giving you a helpful rule. So in the previous section, I taught you how to see which rational number, which fraction is bigger. Go ahead and find common denominators. Um, and, and, order, and then you can see easily which one's bigger and which one's smaller. So if you haven't looked at that, go look at it in the previous section. But actually, there's a helpful rule um, that is something that's probably worth your time to learn. And I'm just going to show it to you real quick. Basically, if you have two fractions, a over C and B over D. These are just fractions with A, B, C, D. Those are numbers. It turns out that this A over C is bigger than this second one if the following is true. A times D is greater than B times C. So basically what we're saying here is when you have two fractions, any two fractions that you're trying to compare, if you multiply these numbers together, you cross multiply. It's like a big X, right? A times D is this. B times C is this. It turns out that if this is bigger than this multiplication, like we have it here, if it's, if it's bigger this direction, then this fraction is the bigger fraction. right? And so, as a, in a, as a similar result, if um, A over C is less than B over D, if A times D is less than b times c. This will be a lot clearer when we have numbers, but basically, in this case, again, it's the same fraction, a over c, b over d. We cross multiply these two numbers to get this. We cross multiply these two numbers to get this. And if this number, when you multiply them, is less than the other, then the original fraction is less. So it's something that has been proven in math. You don't need to know why it's the case right now. It's something that's been proven to be true for any fraction. So a over c, b over d, or anything. This could be 1 half. This could be 2 thirds. All you do is cross multiply the terms, figure out what's bigger, and then you can easily tell which original fraction is bigger. So um, in order to show that, we're going to do a little more complicated problem. We're going to arrange the following fractions from least from smallest, in other words, to greatest. And the fractions that I'm giving you to do this with are 4 sevenths, uh, 3 eighths, and 5 ninths. All right, so first of all, I'm trying to arrange them. I'm trying to figure out which one is the smallest fraction, which one's the middle fraction, and which one's the largest fraction. Now, before we use our little shortcut that we have here, I want to tell you that there is a bulletproof way to do this. If you find a common denominator for all three of these fractions and multiply to everything to get the proper common denominator, then it's very easy to look at them like we did in the last section and order them. But you see, since the denominators are 7, 8, and 9, it's going to be cumbersome to find a great common denominator. And you can. Of course, you can do it. It's just going to be a big number. And so it's, it involves a lot of multiplication. So what we want to do is compare these two fractions first to see which one's bigger. And then we'll compare these two fractions and we'll see which one's bigger. And we're going to use this rule in order to do it. So let's first of all turn our attention to just these two fractions. Forget about the third one. We want to figure out which one's bigger, 4 sevenths or 3 eighths. So what you do is you cross multiply, right? You say 4 times 8. Uh, so we'll do it like this, 4 times 8. Uh, we'll put a blank here. And then we're going to cross multiply the other direction, 3 times 7. So it would be 3 times 7. So what we get here, 8 times 4 is 32, and 3 times 7 is 21. So because 32 is bigger than 21, then the first fraction is bigger than the second fraction. So the way you write that down is 4 sevenths is greater than 3 eighths. But make sure you understand how this process works. You multiply as an x. This direction, you get a number. This direction, you get a number. The arrow goes this direction, so the original in the original set of fractions, 4 sevenths is bigger than 3 eighths. All right? But that's only half the story because we have another fraction here to deal with. So what we want to do next, let's compare these two fractions, and we'll do that right here. So here we want to cross multiply this direction like this. So 3 times 9 is what we want to do. We'll say 3 times 9, put a blank, and then 5 times 8. 5 times 8. So 3 times 9 is 27, blank, 5 times 8 is 40. Now which way does the arrow go? 27 is less than 40, so the arrow goes this way. So because the arrow goes this way, in the original two fractions, the arrow also goes this way. So the way we write it is we say 3 eighths is less than 5 ninths. So you see what we figured out is that 
3 eighths is actually smaller than this fraction, and 3 eighths is smaller than the other fraction. So it turns out that this fraction is smaller than this one, and this fraction is also smaller than this one. So what we found out is that 3 eighths is the smallest fraction of all three of them. By doing two separate comparisons, we know now that 3 eighths is the smallest, right? So that's going to be the first one. We're arranging from least to greatest. But we need to now know of the remaining two fractions, which one's bigger. So let's compare 4 sevenths to 5 ninths, and that's going to be able to help us solve our problem. So let's go over here. Uh, let's compare 4 sevenths, and we'll compare it to 5 ninths. So now we need to cross multiply like this. 4 times 9, put a blank. 5 times 7. What is 9 times 4? That's going to be 36. And what is 5 times 7? That's 35. So which one's bigger? The 36 is bigger. So that means that in the original fraction, the 4 sevenths is bigger. So the way to write that down is 4 sevenths is bigger than 5 ninths. So now you have to put all of the information together. Which one? We're trying to arrange from least to greatest. So 3 eighths, we already said is the smallest fraction, right? So let's go ahead and write this here. 3 eighths is the smallest fraction. What's going to be of the remaining two fractions in the list, which one's the next biggest one? Well, 4 sevenths is bigger than this, so that means 5 ninths must be smaller than this fraction, so we'll put 5 ninths next. And the only one left is 4 sevenths. So that's the answer. It's 3 eighths, 5 ninths, 4 sevenths. So you see when you're comparing three fractions, you just have to do multiple comparisons to get the job done. I, I picked this problem because I wanted to show you how to do this a bunch of different times. So we just did a little bit more complicated problem to do it. Uh, but that's how you handle it if you have three fractions. Now the other thing that many times you're asked to do when you're first starting to learn about rational numbers like we are here is you might be asked a, a, a question like this. What, what rational number, which means what fraction, uh, is one half way, halfway between five ninths and 4 sevenths. So I give you two fractions, 5 ninths and 4 sevenths, and I ask you what fraction is right in the middle, right in between those. All right. The easiest way to figure out how to do that is just to average these fractions. These are just numbers, right? They're, they're fractions, and yes, they're a little bit ugly, but you can average fractions just like you can average numbers. So how do you average things? If you have two things, you add them up, and then you divide by two because you have two items here. So that's what you need to do. So you'll say 5 ninths plus 4 sevenths. First, let's do the addition. How do we handle that? Let's rewrite the fractions. 5 ninths plus 4 sevenths. Common denominator is going to be tough, so here I'm just going to multiply by 7, which is the denominator of the other fraction. And I'll take this and multiply by 9. So what I'm going to get uh, over here, 5 times 7 is 35. 9 times 7 is 63. That's the first fraction. When you do this multiplication, now you do this one. 9 times 4 is 36 over 63. All right, so now you have a common denominator. So what is 35 plus 36? 35 plus 36 is 71, so you write it as 71 over 63. So that's what happens when you add both of those fractions together, but that's not going to give you the middle. That's just adding them up. In order to find the number that's right in the middle, you add them up, you divide by 2. So now we have to say... We have to take the 71 over 63 and then divide by 2. Um, the easiest way that you can write it like this if you want, divided by uh, 2, that's fine. So then you can say 71 over 63. You'll change the division into what? Multiplication. And then you flip over the second fraction, it becomes 1 half. This just comes from how we deal with fractions. Division becomes multiplication. Take the second fraction, flip it over. So now you just multiply. 1 times 71 on the top is 71. 63 times 2 is 126, and that's the answer. You can't really simplify that anymore. So if you're given a question that's like, find the number that's right in between these numbers, then you just need to know that you can average rational numbers or fractions just like you can any number. You add them up, divide by 2. Um, and that's we're just, the rest of it is just an exercise in doing that. So we've learned about rational numbers, um, and we have a little more work to do with rational numbers, but we're done with this lesson. Follow me on to the next lesson, where we're going to learn how to write these rational numbers as a decimal, and it'll become very clear and easy to understand once we get there. So make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll tackle it right now.